This time to prevent scratches on the table, we're putting a blanket down first. See, I do learn. Hi guys, my name is Annabelle from Horizon Cosplay and today we're doing another sewing machine unboxing. This time not for a singer, but for a Frisch, Frischter and Rossiman. I'm very dyslexic, probably did not pronounce that right. Anyway, why is it not a singer? Well that's easy, because this one isn't my machine. It is one that was for sale in Oxford and a friend of mine asked me to go pick it up for her. In fact, she asked me to go pick up two separate machines. This is just the first one and the one we're gonna look at. I can tell you right now that she brought it for about five pounds and it actually has a second-hand price tag on it for 20. The price tag is from a charity shop, actually one that I know very well. It was brought from the Oxfam Superstore in Oxford. It essentially says it's an antique Fisher & Rossman manual sewing machine and it is not in working order and the base, which I'm sure you can see, is in poor condition. It's all peeling off, which is a bit of a shame. This one also doesn't come with a case. The other one actually did, but we'll be looking at that one another day. Okay, so let's have a look at this. You guys are currently looking at the front of the machine. As we can see, the wood is in really bad order. I can see lots of holes here where woodworm has clearly been in effect. Top bit's peeling off. We are gonna see if we can maybe glue that back down a little bit um, and it's also got some tape here which actually we're just gonna remove now now this machine is very dirty it's ugh, been sat in the loft so the lady that we got this off of had brought this as a display piece along with another Frisch and Rossman machine she had it in her living room for several years and over covid they redecorated because they had the time got put in the attic and then she just wanted rid of it so she's definitely never used it see it says it's not in working order but Ah, sounds crunchy. To be fair, it sounds like it just needs an oil. But yeah, so it's very dirty. The decals are in amazing condition. I've never actually done anything with Fisher & Rossman machines, so I genuinely do not know how this is supposed to work. Is that supposed to come out more? It's supposed to be a shuttle bobbin, so one of those longer ones, which you can see the one for just here. And by the looks of things, it's missing its bobbin which is a shame but I can see some things in here so let's have a look at that Ugh. we are gonna give this clean up in a second by the way the stitch length coordinator is stiff and disgusting it does look like it's gonna be all right this machine does have hinges so it should lift up. I'm guessing this is the screw to keep it in place, but there's no way I can get that working. Ah, here we go. So we do have the shuttle with a bobbin in it. So that's good. A little bit rusty. Might be able to clean that. But how do you date these machines? Do they have the same codes that like singers do? I'm not really seeing one. There's no date on the price tag. We will have to see. For now though, let's have a look and see what other accessories it comes with. So there is, I have no idea what this is. It has measurements on it though. Some kind of sewing foot? Kinda looks like a binding foot at some point. Again, it's really rusty. It looks like it's an adjustable binding foot. If you use a screwdriver, you can adjust it to the measurements that it says. So that might be worth saving. Definitely something quite nice. We have a spare screw, very rusty, very gross. Another bobbin. Always good to have a spare. Again, no idea what this is, but looks pretty cute. Hey Ben, do you have a pair of like pliers or something? This bolt here is incredibly stiff, but I kind of want to get under the machine and I need to undo it, I think, to do that. Unless you want to try turning it, but it looks pretty rusty. <laughs> ben, the pliers you've given me won't open. <laughs> They're like glued yeah. shut. Let's see what else is in here. Some more rusty and disgusting feet. Ugh. I mean, really, I'm pretty sure a lot of these can be saved. They're just gonna need to be scrubbed up really well, given a good oiling, and then they should be usable for the other machine, even if we can't get this one working. Though, I reckon the main reason it's not working, because all the components seem to go, is just because it needs a good oil and clean, because it's freaking disgusting. A lot of these feet are very unusual as well. I genuinely don't know what a lot of them do so it'll be interesting to have a bit of a google and find out i feel like this machine has definitely been kept in a fairly damp environment before i'm not impressed <laughs> i love these old machines i think they're really worth saving essentially 
and it's such a shame to see ones like this where it's just not in great condition. I mean, other than one little bit of rust on the wheel that I can see here and maybe some wear around the handle where obviously it gets handled, the decals look to be in great shape. So we are gonna try and clean this up. No idea what this is, random rusty ring. We have a broken bobbin. I have no idea what this is. Piece of metal with ever ready British made. Was it metal from a sewing needle packet? It's so rusty on the back that I can't actually read it. But we'll try cleaning that up and see if it is anything. There is quite a lot of needles and pins on the bottom there. I, I'm not even gonna try and save those. They have rusted to hell. Okay, what I'm gonna do is find an old soda can that I can put all the sharps in. And then we're gonna try and clean her up. So I just made Ben finish off his Lemonata so that I have something to put the sharps in just because I don't like putting raw needles into my bin because I feel like that is just asking for someone to get hurt, especially when they're rusty. I am not great with needles and I do not want to have to get a tetanus jab because I stabbed myself with a rusty needle. Oh my god, the thought of that just ugh, makes me shiver. So this is the inside of the storage unit now. As we can see, it's a rusty needles, not particularly nice, utterly disgusting. So let's get the needles out and then I'm going to get the hoover and we're going to hoover it because frick me that looks utterly gross. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this needle. It is huge. It's a shame it's so rusty because I would actually have loved to have kept this. Just look at that. That needle is literally the size of my finger. It's utterly mad. We're also going to throw away the broken bobbin. There's not a lot of point in keeping it. Unfortunately, it's, it's not usable so it's going in the bin. Okay, that's all done. Rubbish over there. Time for the hoover. We're also just gonna snip off the tag. Like the lady was using it as a display piece. Did she use it as a display piece with the price tag still on? I mean, I wouldn't, but not my choice, I suppose. So that already looks 10 times better. I'm really quite happy with it. We're gonna give it a quick wipe over now. Thing that only damaged the decals I can really see. In the center decal, there is a small chunk of paint missing, like uh, literally the whole layer of paint, which is a shame, but it's so tiny. I don't think you're really gonna see it. So we're gonna give it a quick polish and an oil and see if we can open it up to get underneath. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of water and some toilet paper and I'm just gonna dampen the toilet paper slightly. It's extra soft toilet paper as well, which I buy specifically or I brought specifically to clean up several machines over the next few weeks. And we're just gonna wipe away the dirt, anything the Hoover didn't get. I'm gonna give the wood a bit of a wipe over too. Probably have brought a bag over, put all my rubbish in, but it's not that smart. Push all those to the side, we'll sort those later. Now the other thing we're gonna use is some cotton buds. Just to get into those little spaces that I couldn't with the tissue paper. And you can see the amount of dirt that's just come off of that. Oh, that is disgusting. And now that's all done, it's time to admit that that's the first time I've actually done that. But I think it turned out well. It certainly looks a lot better already. Also, as much as it's stiff, I'm actually pretty sure that that's working better already. So the next job is going to be to get some sewing machine oil and we're gonna oil up the machine and then we're also gonna wipe over the machine with the decals to essentially get any remaining dirt off, you just have it shiny. The one thing that sewing machine manufacturers in the past and today can always guarantee is that the machine is going to get oil, potentially spilled on it or anything else at some point. So this is essentially what we have to make sure that it all gets nice and shiny. Actually, hey Ben, you're a lot stronger than me. Could you try undoing this bolt? Maybe it's just a stiff. Oh, yes, and now we can just look under the machine, which has more disgusting needles and a little bit of rust going on on the bottom side, but nothing that I think we can't fix. Also, there's cobwebs there, so I'm guessing at some point this was a spider's home. So thanks to Ben, we've actually can look at the underside of the machine. So we're just gonna give that a quick clean as well. So I'm just putting the can there to help support the weight of the machine, just because I wanna work on this bit, but if that goes down, this whole thing just comes up and it's really irritating. 
Okay, I say let's oil this puppy up. Now the reason I'm using cotton pads is because they're very soft, they're quite absorbent, especially for the decals, you don't want to use something that's particularly rough because it will essentially scrub the decals off, which is what we don't want. Let's start with the base, dip some oil there. I'm using official Singer sewing machine oil and my only advice with this stuff, says the person who's actually never done this before, I've been around a lot of vintage machines, I feel that counts for something. If in doubt, put on too much. You put on too much, it'll dry, it'll wear away. You don't put on enough, you're just never gonna get those results that you're looking for. And that, after having cleaned it with water, is the result. Let's make sure to oil the hinges as well. Okay, now when we turn the handle, I can see all the undersides working. So what I'm essentially gonna do is oil all of those individually moving parts, just to make sure that they get a good direct oil before I put the top of the machine down and move on. And immediately, we see that that stiffness that I think is what made the machine be labelled as not in working order is pretty much gone. The machine has holes in it. All of these holes are where the oil is supposed to go. So we're going to go around, we're going to put oil in all the holes, and then we're also going to wipe it all over the outside just to help bring the decals back. And here's the thing, this machine is not in working order as it said. The lady that I got it from said, I think she had it about somewhere between three and five years, which is all fine and dandy and whatnot, but it does mean that it hasn't been cared for or used in those three to five years, which is not obviously a good thing. And you can see as I oil it, it's just bringing out the colors in the decal so, so nicely. This is actually coming out so well. I I didn't think it would be quite this good. A little bit of adjustment, and I think we just fixed it. There's only one more thing I want to do before we try sewing with it. The last thing we're going to do is I have some wood glue, and essentially all this flaky stuff at the front. We can't repair it, we can't save it, but what we can do is stick it back down and hope that it doesn't damage itself any further. I have selected a paintbrush to sacrifice to the sewing machine gods, hail thee and all that, and let's see how well this works. That's all been stuck down, all the glue is on, so we just literally have to wait and see if this works. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a quick tidy up and then I suggest that we get on Google and see if we can figure out when this machine was actually made, which is something I've been putting off doing for like the entirety of this unboxing. So apparently they do have serial codes, not that I've seen one on this. Ah, that one. Harrods number 15, decal style bronze lilies. I'm pretty sure we've got bronze lilies as our decal style. Well, they were made in Germany. Company was started in 1864 close to Berlin. Became Germany's largest sewing machine manufacturer. Oh, it's not telling me where the serial numbers are. It's very frustrating. So genuinely, I have just searched all over the internet. I even found several unboxing videos of other Fister and Rossmann machines. See, I noticed there's an ST in there now. And essentially, not a damn clue where the hell it is. I've messaged some friends of mine and I've left a post on the Vintage Sewing Machines Reddit page asking people if they can help. The last bit of the glue is just drying at the end there and I'm just looking up how to thread these machines because obviously this one doesn't come with any instructions. I think we're all threaded up. I think the glue should be dry. Well, some of it's dry, some of it's definitely not. Okay, so this is what she looks like all threaded up. So we threaded it with the thread facing the front goes across to this tension hook here, through that loop, down to this one here, back up to that one, back down through the little marker thing, and then from front to back. I suppose we should try and bring the bobbin thread up to the top, and then we're going to try sewing it, even though the glue is still drying and I have to reach over a knife block to do so. Okay, thread is through. So, I think she's gonna stitch. All right, other than the fact that I just snapped the thread when I pulled it out, we actually have some pretty perfect stitches. 
So screw that, whoever said that this machine didn't work, it clearly does. I do think we could do with adjusting the tension a little bit, but I've got to be honest, I'm not actually sure how to adjust the tension on this. So I've just tried fiddling with this thing, which I think is the tension, and we're just gonna give it a stitch, see how it works out. So I put it to the left, I'm gonna see if it was better or worse than before. I would say that's slightly better, so let's turn it to the left again, because I think it definitely needs to be better than that is. We have it! I don't know if you can see because it's on cream fabric, but those stitches are just about perfect. So this machine, which if you want to read the label, was not in working order, it's funny enough, now working. Okay guys, so it's been a few hours and it's finally dry. I'm really sorry, I forgot to leave it threaded up so I could show you me sewing on it, you know, without a knife block sat on the edge. But as you can see, the edge is quite nice. Here where it's missing a chunk, you can see the shiny glue. But overall, nothing's peeling anymore, so I think we've done a reasonable job of repairing it. Is it perfect? Definitely not. A lot of the glues actually come out of the wormwood holes. So there are some shiny patches, which isn't ideal. But at the end of the day, I think we've prevented any more damage from occurring, which is really kind of what we wanted. What I might try and get Ben to do is just make a basic box for the top of this machine, just to help it stop getting covered in dust and everything. Or maybe I'll just quickly whiz up a fabric case, just because, especially because it's staying with me for another week or two. You know, I live with pets. There's a lot of dust around, and unfortunately this machine has nothing to protect it from. But she is looking so shiny, definitely ten times better than she was when we started. Works like an absolute dream, I mean just watch that movement. Ooh. And if you want to see the other machine that my friend picked up and that I'm also repairing, polishing up and making look amazing, please do remember to subscribe because that video will be going up very soon. Other than that guys, I will see you next Wednesday for more cosplay, history bounding and sewing content. And until then, have a beautiful day. Bye!